In Affinity Photo, you can create all kinds of amazing designs using brushes. In this case, I'm using the cyclic feature, the hidden feature of Affinity Photo. You've probably been using pressure, probably angle, all those sort of things, but cyclic is amazing for creating all kinds of unique designs. And this one was created using a zigzag shape. However, first thing to do is create the shape itself, the zigzag. And that's just simply using the pen tool. So pen tool, and just click, 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 and this add nodes. And you can vary it, of course, you can make all kinds of different shapes. You don't have to have just a very basic zigzag design like that. What you can do, maybe create massive long line of zigzag designs, or all, all, but the key thing is for this video is something that's fairly sharp, not smooth, it's not rounded designs, it's a sharp design. So with that, if you decide you make a mistake, you always go to no tool, then you can reposition it, move it around, create something like that instead. You'll notice it's got no fill. Simply click up here and you can add a gradient to it. All kinds of different colors can be added, but also colors. I'm just gonna go with a solid red. Now you'll notice in the other one, that I initial image, that had some dots in it. Well, you can create that using the stroke, which I've set to black, 2.5. Just go with dash dot. I'm gonna do that a little bit later in the video. So with this, I'm now gonna turn it into a brush. Need to rasterize it. So layer and down to rasterize. Also another option, maybe if you wanna create some depth to it, go to the layers, click effects. And you find all the panels in the window menu. So go here to 3D and increase that. And you can see then you get a lovely three dimensional effect. And in outer shadow, maybe go for the center and like that. And also, if you want to move the shadow around, go to the offset tool, just click it, and then you can reposition it. So you might want to create something like that instead. And then close. Well, this design still is a curve, so you need to go to layer and rasterize it. Turn that off and rasterize. It's a pixel layer. You can now turn it into a brush. So here's the brushes. Go to the right side menu, down here to new brush from selection. If you didn't rasterize it, you wouldn't be able to use that option. So it needs to be rasterized. New brush from selection, and you can see the brush there. Double click, and then you've got the brush editor. And the great thing about this tool is that you can actually use this live. So you can just go press B to get the paintbrush tool, and you can just have a preview here. So any brush here, I can just apply it now. That's the current brush. But you can modify it. So go to general, so general, I can reduce it down. Also, I can change the spacing. So I'm going to go something like that. So you can see the effect there, which doesn't look that great because obviously it's black. So you've got a very strong black background there. But also, you can now go here to dynamics and size jitter. I'm using an art pad and pen. You don't have to, but you can create some more interesting designs if you've got an art pad and pen. And again, you can just use this option for cyclic. So you've got random, you've got pressure, cyclic. And you can see the sort of designs you can create. And you can modify these using this. These little side profiles. And you can vary it so you can create some truly weird and wonderful designs just by using that. Close that. Also, rotation jitter. You can create something like that. So if I apply it now, let's just apply it. You can see it becomes a very sharp, sort of intense, sort of crackling, full of sort of, well, definitely sharp edges. But also, Exactly the same as before, up here with cyclic, you can go to cyclic here. And you can see then you get this design where it's sort of just twisting, twisting and turning. And click here, and you can then modify this. So as you change it, just add some points. You can see, as you do that, you can see, just creates a variety of different designs. And also huge gesture as well. So you can push that out. At the moment, it's random, so you can see the reds, greens, blues, etc. And I'm gonna go recycle it. So now instead you've got this lovely rainbow effect as it runs through and you can do the same. So click and then modify that and you can see as you change it, you might get more like an emphasis on the red or the blues or greens. And you can click there and you can see, create something like that. Right, click close. That's the brush. What you need to do then is simply just apply it. Just simply just run across the entire image very rapidly and you can see, Fill it with this lovely sort of fan-like cyclic 
design. And of course, you can vary it in numerous ways. And of course, once you've got this design, you can always, of course, go to filters, distort, deform, maybe mirror, and create all kinds of different options there. Great way of creating an interesting symmetry effect there. Click apply. You notice the original image had dots in it. Well, that was the dash feature. So let's just now get rid of this. Basically, it's the same sort of steps, but I'm just going to go here, go to the pen tool, again, click, and you, of course, create maybe a more complex zigzag. So maybe something like that. Don't have to just go for, say, like two, maybe go for three or four. Again, fill it, maybe fill it with a gradient. So swatches, and just fill it like that. Maybe click there, like that. And then go to the gradient tool and modify that gradient. But also what you can do is you can go here with the move tool selected, you've got the stroke, 2.5. I'm just gonna push that up a bit. So I'm gonna go with about seven, just so you can see it. Make If you've got too small, I think sometimes it makes it hard to see. So you've got that, just go here to the dash stars, dots and dashes, dash line star. And then you can see, put something like 0 0.6 and three, or if you want more of a gap between them, maybe four and so on. And then you can use this phase feature. So you just click there, just change that value to and it will move moves the positions. Obviously, it doesn't particularly matter in this example. But once you've done that, you can then again rasterize it or also go to layers, effects, as long as it's selected, click effects, then go to outer shadow and simply drag there, drag there and drag there. And you can see these dots actually take, also can be seen. So just move that there. And then go to 3D or maybe Bevel and Boss. Just push that up and close. Got this design now. Unfortunately, you can't recolor all the design. These it's like diff be nice if it was different dots, different color dots. But unfortunately, it's black. But you of course can vary that. You can put color, maybe go there and maybe go with pink, or use swatches here. So you can see then you can actually add different colors. Not so controllable in the way that I would like to change it, but you can see different colors can be added in there. But I think the black one makes it probably more intense, but let's just quickly try it. I haven't tried it, so I'm just gonna go with this. So again, right side, right click, and then go down here to rasterize. Click, turn that off. I want it all together, the actual shadow, etc. Rasterize. Then go to brushes. Right side menu again, new brush from selection. And now you've got that brush. Let's just delete that, double click. And now you can see the design there. And again, size jitter, change the size there, maybe make it a bit smaller. Spacing, just push that. And now, because of the ridges, these things, you can actually see you've got different colors coming in here, which I think is really quite nice and a feature that I really like about that dash style. And then go to dynamics. And again, you've got that. Go there, you could go with cyclic again, create some interesting sort of in out sort of designs. And down here, the rotation jitter, you could go for something like that. So it's actually just randomly rotated. So let's just apply it. Oh, one feature is very odd. When you actually go to the move tool, when you've got this panel, it suddenly just all disappears. I think that's slightly disconcerting. You have to remember to press B to get the paintbrush tool. Okay, so once you've got that, you can then apply your, and it creates a sort of, I don't know, sort of Christmassy like sort of design, you know, quite nice on, on a Christmas tree or something. I think that's quite a lovely or candy sort of sweet like effect, I think. I haven't fully finished because huge jitter, I can change this. So now if I apply it, this time it's gonna be random colors. So you get a real sort of candy floss unusual design very quickly using this with these dots and also remember the gradient the gradient's the key thing here what you can also do again cyclic so cyclic and now with this click here you can change the colors as you go through this and again you can see how the colors change and click close that's the end point for that brush and let's just apply it to be honest very little difference from the randomization to there and just finish off there and of course you can apply it in countless ways it could be used as layers backgrounds wallpaper designs 
Well, I hope you found this video of interest. Any questions, please let me know it in the comments below. Always great to hear from you. Have you been using these brush features? The cyclic feature, I think, is one of those great features of Affinity Photo that doesn't probably get much press. I mean, I've, <laughs> there's not that much information about it. It's like a few other features in the brushes, and I'm going to be working on some of those in future videos as well. Bye.